Okay, so great solves. In this video, we are now doing question number four. And I'm not going to say it was an easy question, um, but this one doesn't get, you know, very, very difficult. You just need to know the concepts of log and you'll be sorted out. So what we are given here, let me just rewrite that. We have f of x is equal to log base one over three um, to the pop. Okay, x. And then they told us that um, this is a point on f of x and then uh, this graph is has a as the x intercept the question the first question wants us to write out what to calculate the value of t so remember t we have the x value of t so we just substitute into our equation so t will be y right so we'll say y which is our t is equal to log right so 1 over 3 and in the place of x we're going to put 3 and quickly you can just put that on the calculator and find out what is log base 1 over 3 times 3 there. t is going to be minus 1. t is going to be minus 1. So that is going to be your 1 mark. Okay, t is going to be minus 1, minus 1. Okay, now the next question, let me just erase that real fast. The next question wants us to calculate the coordinates of a. a is the x-intercept, as you can see that. So we're going to rewrite that because I shouldn't have. x is equal to log base 1 over 3 x right this is the x intercept x intercept let y be zero so zero is equal to log one over three x remember now we need to do the reverse operation of log right i always tell people that the base of your log will be the base of the exponent which you will have to figure out and what you have here in the big brackets of your log is going to be the answer across the equals to sign okay so naturally is going to be the base of our exponent and what is over here is going to be the exponent basically so it will be one over okay let me start with x x will then be the base of the log is one over three the exponent right of this will be the answer that we have over here right so you now have to think backwards if you were solving for zero we let's treat zero as an exponent you would say zero is equal to log the base of the exponent which is zero is going to be one over three and then here you're going to have x that's the same thing you're just going now backwards so that means that our x value is going to be one because anything to the power of zero is one so over here we will have one okay fine with that so coordinates of a is one and zero again a mark and another mark All right so so far so good the following question so if you're new to my channel uh, i already did question one two three this is now question four so you can take a look at those videos and don't leave without subscribing if you are going to study civil engineering after this stage um, i do post i mean if you're studying civil engineering through the college route i post civil engineering videos as well so subscribe and this channel will be your gold mine okay now let's move on to see what the next question is saying because we already dealt with the statement uh okay it's log to the power of x okay now they want us to find the inverse equation simple as well if we are given f of x is equal to log one over two x what do we do when you're looking for the inverse we swap the x and the y so this would be x is equal to log okay this is one over three sorry log one over three y now let's solve for y again you need to know the opposite the opposite operation of log so it's going to be y is equal to 1 over 3 and your exponent is going to be x remember what we did with the 0 when we put 0 over here when we are solving for x that's the same thing so this is going to be your inverse but you have to write it with this show that it's an inverse of x uh, 1 over 3 to the power of x that is going to be your inverse but they said in the form of y so you can just leave it like that is equal to 1 over 3 to the x right like that again you've already gotten yourself four marks okay you've gotten yourself four marks already now the following question the one is to find the write down the asymptote of the inverse so just by looking at this the asymptotes okay you can see that we have an option to sketch this graph right but let's just do that you know that this is three and this is minus one right on the inverse you'll have to swap the the numbers so it will be minus one and three this is on the inverse so that is what we're just going to do over here let's just 
uh, you had this question in your hand so you could have easily just did this as well right so that you avoid you know making silly mistakes now when x is minus 1 y was 3 1 2 3 it was over here it was this point here right now we already have the equation of the inverse so we can just easily uh, substitute and see the shape of this graph so we can basically just sketch it I'm going to do it over here so I don't have to end up sketching the graph because that's the next question that they're asking. Sketch the graph and show all the x-intercepts. Okay, so if you have the inverse, uh, we already have the equation of the inverse, right? Or oh, right down, okay, we already have the equation of the inverse. Now let's find out the x-intercept, the y-intercept. y-intercept of y is equal to 1 over 3x. y-intercept to let x be 0. So when y-intercept x is 0, if x is 0, that is 1 over 3 to the power of 0, which is going to be 1. So when y intercept, let x be 0. So when y is 0, x is 1. Okay. When y is 0, when y is 0, x is going to be 1. y intercept, let x be... Wait, 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 wait. wait. y intercept, you let x be 0. So when x is 0, y is 1. Okay. When x is 0, your y is 1. So I think we can all see... The shape of this graph it will be over here right now okay does this graph have an x intercept well let's find out x intercept you let y equal to zero right x intercept you let y equal to zero so if y is equal to zero if we have zero is equal to one over three to the power of x now let's solve x is going to be log base is one over three and here we're going to have zero now let's see log one over three and in there we're going to put zero we don't have right we are not going to have an x intercept which is quite okay we're not going to have an x intercept x intercept we let y equal to zero wait hold on x intercept you let y equal to zero and that is what we did we let y equal to zero and we solve for that and we don't have an x-intercept. So let's try to just get the proper shape of our equation, of our graph, I mean. So we have 1 over 3. Let's put the 1 over 3 to the power of minus 1 and see what happens. Okay, just a minute. To the power of minus 1. Now that means that when x is minus 1, when x is minus 1, we got that as 3. When x is minus 2, we will get our answer as 9. Okay, now when x is 1, when x is 1, our answer is 1 over 3. So when x is 1, our answer will be 1 over 3 somewhere here. Okay, so the graph doesn't have a y inter an x intercept. It makes sense. That means that the shape of our graph, ladies and gentlemen, is going to look like this. It's going to be like this. It never touches that line. Then the so that basically I already sketched the graph for us, right? Now you will have to show that this is one, right? Um, you will need to show that the y intercept you let x be zero. Y intercept you let x be zero. So you need to show zero and one. You need to show that that's the point one. And you also have to show a random point. This point here is going to be your minus one and three because that's how we found that point. And then it doesn't have an x intercept. So does that answer the question write down yes it does now let's go back to 4.4 the equation of the asymptotes will say y is equal to zero because it never crosses the horizontal line it never goes below that point there so that is going to be our horizon our asymptotes y is equal to zero okay now the following question we already sketched that we showed one point which was the inverse which was minus one and three we showed that point and the x intercept we showed that and the asymptote well that is the asymptote right so that is how we secure ourselves the three marks over there right don't forget to just label the graph as the inverse okay that's also a mark f inverse okay uh one day that is that point there all right now following question they are saying that the graph so so far we already have eight marks the graph of h is obtained when f when when the inverse is translated right five units to the right so when a graph is moved five units to the right we subtract five from it right 
we subtract 5 from the value of x. So where is our equation? Our equation, okay, let me erase this real quickly. Right, so let me erase this. Right, here's our equation. Y is equal to 1 over 3 to the power of x. That is the equation of our inverse as we found out there. Now we are translating this graph 5 units to the right. That means it's going to be y is equal to 1 over 3, right, to the power of x minus 5. Right. Okay. And then what are they saying then? They are saying that to the right, determine the y values, right, determine the y values of h where x is greater than 4. Okay. So does this whole graph make sense where x is greater than 4 where is our x values well our x values are over here and we we have three on this point right we have three on this point and what are they doing to the graph they are translating it five units to the right so we need to move it five units to the right and we need to now find out what the values of x okay we need to find the values of x for which because now this is not the equation of uh this is not this is now the equation of h right now this is just this is now the equation of h because we have translated it now we need to find out what are the values of um the values of h right Det oh sorry sorry guys my bad determine the y values of h right where x is greater than four very very mm, Okay, I wouldn't say very, very easy. Okay, what they are simply asking is that if we move this graph five units to the right, right, if we move the graph five units to the right, what are the y values that the x values will be positive? Right? What are now the new y values when our x value is over four, is greater than four? So if four is somewhere over here, let's just say, if four is over here and we draw, we redraw this graph, um, we redraw this graph, let's just say something like this. Okay, if we redraw this graph, is something like this. Right, now what is happening to the... We're just looking for the y values, guys. We're just looking for the y values. So, just to answer this question, you know, we're just going to say y. Y is going to be... Y is going to be an element of real numbers, but remember, x is greater than 4, you can see that as you progress, the graph never touches the horizontal asymptote. Nothing changed with the asymptote, guys. Nothing changed to the asymptote of the graph. It was just shifted. So, I really don't get why um, they would shoot you with this question here. Okay, don't even stress. Let's look at it differently. Let's look at um, this point here where we have um, 3, right? Where we have minus sorry minus one on that point where we have minus one if we are going to add five to that it's going to be minus it's going to be four if we add five on this point here right if we add five on this point hey boys and girls boys and girls this question was not hard at all okay watch this let me explain watch this let's take this point that we have here if we add five units because it's being translated five units to the right so we will say minus one plus five right and then we have three right what you will see you have four and three they want the y values right so as x is equal to four now and y is three what happens is that the x as you go that side as our graph moves to the side here right maybe maybe the new point is now here Okay, though it doesn't make sense, uh, let me allow me to just take some time to explain this question because uh, it's not very difficult. Let's say the new point is now here. Okay, let's do it like this. We have moved. This was the equation that we have. Now the the translated version is now four and three. Now they want the y values when x is greater than four. What you are going to notice is that the, the graph never reaches y is equal to zero it just keeps on approaching zero but it never now you will notice that from this point here going this side your y values are always over here right they are always less than what less than three so to answer that question we're going to say y is less than three but we know that y 
sorry, why do I have that minus zero? So we'll say y is less than three. That is all that we can say. Y is less than three, and then y is not equal to zero because that is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, guys, that is how you will secure yourself the 10 marks. I know the explanation might have been confusing in the beginning, but I hope you ended up getting it in the end. Don't leave without subscribing. If you plan on doing civil engineering, uh, taking the college routes or whatever it is, uh, this channel is going to be your gold mine. Uh, enjoy the journey and see you in question five. Cheers.